So now I'm going to talk about the B section of the night in Tunis here and some ideas for improvising over that. Now it starts with a minor 2-5-1 in G minor. Uh, now again, Charlie talks very well about kind of uh, voicing this sequence at the piano. He talks about some of the crucial pitches involved in it and they're consistent with the crucial pitches that you might choose to use as an improviser. And there are kind of Minor harmony is a huge topic and there are lots of levels to it. So I'm going to try and slowly introduce some further levels of uh, complexity, really. Your first option over a minor dominant chord or 2-5 passage is to play the harmonic minor in the key that you're in. So in this case, it's in G minor because it's a G minor cadence. So play G harmonic minor. But if you're thinking more in terms of that dominant note, the D7, flat 9. Think of G harmonic minor, but starting on D. And you get this curious scale that's sometimes called the Phrygian dominant or the fifth mode of the harmonic minor. So starting on D, but playing the notes of G harmonic minor. So you've got that E flat in there and the F sharp, which are the two pitches that really give this, uh, this sequence a kind of minor flavour. Charlie talks about that in his segment. So here we are. So uh, G harmonic minor, but starting on D. And that's just packed full of those kind of minor flavours, those kind of minor tonal qualities. So if you improvise using that scale throughout that four bar passage, that will sound great. OK, the next stage is to think more about some of the pitches in that harmonic minor scale and which are the most effective to use in terms of bringing out that cadence. Now really the interest is there as I mentioned between that F sharp and the E flat and there's so many jazz, so many bebop phrases that use that interval. It's kind of a it's kind of a strange interval in the context. It's a very evocative interval. That sort of kind of Arabic kind of sound to it, kind of Eastern sound to it. So if you if you can use that interval in your improvisi imp improvisation on this pet passage, it'll sound very effective indeed. There are a number of little licks, of course, that you can use, but it's far better just to practice that sound and try and work out your own ways of incorporating it into the chord changes. That's a really nice one because if you naturally continue down the scale, you land on the B flat, which is the third of the G minor when it resolves to that chord. Or when you get to the, the F sharp, you can go up to the E flat above instead of going down. That again is another very common bebop device. And then I can keep running down the scale again to land on that B flat if I like. Oh, that's another common bebop device, which is to run up from the C chromatically up to the D, so you're eventually resolving on the fifth. But the crucial thing is that interval, that the F sharp to E flat, and then probably the D, and then you can take the line wherever you want after that. That's a really nice little device for improvising on a minor 2-5-1. Um, the third level, third of many, but third that I'm going to introduce today, is to think of that dominant chord, the D7, <coughs> and put in what we call a diminished shape on that, a diminished chord. Now, some of you may know about diminished chords. What they are, they're a stacking up of minor thirds. OK, so if you start on, in this case, the F sharp, the third of the D, seven chord and go up a minor third you get the a up a minor third again you get the c and then up a minor third again you get an e flat and that is really really effective when you're playing on a dominant flat nine chord in this context uh, of a minor two five one start on the third of that chord the f sharp in this case third of d and then up a minor third the a which is the fifth these are all chord tones up a minor third again you get the c which is the dominant seventh that's a chord tone up a minor third again you get the e flat which is that crucial flat nine that really gives it that minor flavor so this is your sound <laughs> So you might want to think, when you're improvising over this sequence, when you hit that dominant chord, 
on creating one of those sorts of shapes. And you can do it kind of starting on any of the chord tones of that dominant chord. So that's the one that starts on the, on the third. And then you can kind of resolve most naturally down a semitone to uh, the D when it finally lands on the G minor chord. Or you could start on the fifth and again go up the diminished shape, up in minor thirds. And now I'm on the leading note, so it wants to resolve to the tonic, the G itself. Or you could start on the fifth. Again, if I resolve up a semitone, I've got that B flat when it lands on the G minor. Because, as you know, when you land on the one chord finally at the end of a 2-5-1 or any kind of cadential sequence, it's really effective in terms of outlining the harmony if you land on one of the chord tones. And using that diminished shape on the dominant chord means that there's always a chord tone in very close proximity to arrive on when the harmony does resolve to the tonic. Thank you.